What's up with this seasoning? It's so bland. Do you think I'm sick or something? You should just quit if you are going to do such a lousy job. My mother-in-law, who moved in with us, complained to me almost every day. I couldn't take her verbal abuse anymore, and even when I talked to my husband about it, he didn't believe me. Finally, the stress broke me and I started taking steps toward divorcing my husband. That's when an opportunity came my way. I'm Lily, 31-year-old working wife. My parents divorced when I was young and I was raised by my dad. I wanted to become independent as soon as possible to make life easier for him. I saw how hard my dad worked to raise me, and even when I suggested he remarry, he'd say, not until you're on your own. I studied hard and graduated from a prestigious private university. I managed to land a job in the sales department of a decent company. Finally, I could give back to my dad. That's what I thought as I worked hard. I met my current husband, Jackson, three years into my job. He transferred to my department and he was the same age as me. He was always cheerful and laughter never ceased around him. Back then, I had no desire to get married and saw Jackson as just a cheerful colleague. But then something happened that changed my perception of him. It was when a new employee I was training made a big mistake. Jackson helped me as I worked overtime to cover for the mistake. I was smitten by his serious expression at that moment. Normally, he's always smiling at work and often talks while working. But there he was, silently and diligently helping me. I found that very attractive. In the heat of the moment after successfully completing the work, I confessed my feelings to him. Jackson seemed surprised but immediately smiled and said, I like you too, Lily, let's date. After about two years of dating, we got married. We started living together in the apartment he had been living in and both continued to work. Life with him was smooth and we happily shared household chores. But that life was shattered two years into our marriage. The trigger was the sudden death of my father-in-law. He was only 65 but died suddenly of a heart attack. My mother-in-law, who had been living with him, was now alone. Concerned, Jackson asked me, please, can we live with mom? She is devastated after suddenly losing dad. I'm worried about her being alone and you're the only one I can rely on. So, I quit my job and started living with my mother-in-law. I had only met her a few times a year, but she seemed quiet and not nagging, so I wasn't particularly worried. In fact, I wanted to be helpful to her after she lost her husband, but that feeling quickly crumbled. My mother-in-law turned out to be very critical, especially towards her daughter-in-law, me. I was tired of my mother-in-law's constant complaints about my housework and her belittling of the remote job I'd worked so hard to find. Adding to my stress were Jackson, my husband, and Mason, my brother-in-law, who always took her side. Mason had moved to New Orleans after getting married and couldn't help around the house. Yet, he never missed an opportunity to meddle in our affairs, calling me Jackson or my mother-in-law to give his two cents. My mother-in-law started complaining to Mason more often, knowing he was on her side. Hey, Lily, I'm bringing some friends over tomorrow. Make sure dinner and snacks are ready, okay? Wait, didn't I tell you I have plans tomorrow? Jackson is off and we were going to watch a movie together. What? You have a problem with that? Who do you think lets you live in this house? My friends want to meet Jackson too, so I planned it for his day off. You're just a housewife, you can watch a movie anytime. This was typical of her. My son is the one who earns the money. She acted as if the house was solely because of her son's earnings. She disregarded my contributions, even though I also worked from home and contributed to the household expenses. I wanted to live peacefully, 
but I had my own life and interests too. I wasn't just a housewife, I had a job. But try telling that to her. She'd immediately complain to Jackson or call Mason to vent. She acted as if I was the one making her life miserable. Jackson, listen, I told Lily I was inviting some friends over to meet you and she got angry. She doesn't want me to invite anyone. Mason, can you please talk to her? Every time I ask her to do something, she gets mad and says I'm disrupting her plans. And then I'd get an earful from Jackson and non-stop angry calls from Mason. What's wrong with mom inviting guests over? It's her house, she has every right. Why are you treating mom like this? Are you just pretending to be helpful while actually eyeing the house? Jackson, who used to be so kind, started taking his mother's side ever since we moved into her house. Mason believed her too, accusing me of being called gold-digging wife. No matter what I said, Jackson would defend her, saying, Mom lost dad. She's had it tough. I get that losing her husband is sad, but that doesn't give her the right to be unreasonable. Emboldened by their sport, my mother-in-law ramped up her harassment. What's this seasoning? Too bland. I'm not sick, you know. You should quit that pointless job, she said, criticizing every little thing I did. Sometimes she'd even disrupt my work calls by yelling for me in the background. I tried to ignore her, but it affected my business, leading to postponed or cancelled deals. If I protested, she'd throw things at me in a fit of rage. Anything she could grab, books, cups, even bottles of seasoning. Once she threw a dictionary that hit my face, leaving a bruise. Neither Jackson nor Mason believed me, instead taking her word that I'd made up the injury to blame her. The stress from living like this started taking a toll on me. I began to either throw up my meals or couldn't stop binge eating. Whether it was the binge eating or just the stress, I developed alopecia areata. I knew I had to do something before my health completely deteriorated. The more I thought about it, the worse my eating habits became and eventually I was hospitalized for a stomach ulcer. You might think being hospitalized for an ulcer is terrible, but those two weeks away from my mother-in-law and Jackson were a relief. They only visited me once, so I didn't have to deal with them. The nurses took excellent care of me, and this hospitalization was a great opportunity for me, and I had time to think about my future. Being away from Jackson and my mother-in-law made me realize what happiness felt like. When I calmed down and thought about it, I realized that I had been treated unfairly. I started contemplating divorce. When I was discharged, I was surprised to see Jackson had come to pick me up. As we drove home, I wondered if he'd changed his ways. But no, he hadn't. While I was in the hospital, he'd been doing all the housework because my mother-in-law refused to help. Even when Jackson appealed to his mother-in-law to help her balance work and housework, it seems that she did not do any housework at all, thinking, you live in my house, it's only natural that you should serve me. Her attitude made him slightly more sympathetic to me. But it was too little too late. A small change in his behavior wasn't going to change my mind about divorcing him. My dad reassured me, I can't support you, Lily. I always have. I started preparing for the divorce, secretly moving my belongings to my parents' house. It turned out to be the right move. Jackson revented to his old ways, siding with his mother and growing cold towards me. Then my mother-in-law had a stroke and was hospitalized. I called an ambulance and rushed to the hospital. Jackson arrived soon after and Mason was on his way. The doctor said she'd need surgery and rehab and would likely have some lasting disabilities. In other words, your mother-in-law will need some level of care. During her surgery, Mason arrived. So, Lily, you're taking care of mom, right? You live here? 
and you're the wife, so it's your job. Yeah, Lily, you're doing it, right? So, Jackson, you're not helping at all? And Mason, you're not contributing financially? I moved out when I got married. I came today because I'm worried, but I have no responsibility here. I work, so I don't have time for caregiving. Can't you help on your days off after work? And Mason, you can at least contribute some money, right? Why should I help make your life easier? I want to relax on my days off. I'd had enough of their selfishness. I won't be taking care of her. By then, I'd made enough preparations to announce my decision to divorce. Luckily, Jackson yelled, If you're not going to take care of her, then we're getting a divorce. Fine, let's get divorced right now. Both Jackson and Mason looked shocked. You sure? You can't live on your own. I'll be fine. I'll go get the divorce papers right now. I left the hospital during my mother-in-law surgery and took a taxi to the city office. When I returned, Jackson and Mason were arguing in the waiting room. Do I have to do everything myself? You're her son too, you know. I moved to New Orleans when I got married. You're the real son here. It was clear they were trying to pass the responsibility of caring for their mother onto each other. Holding back a laugh, I walked in and handed Jackson the divorce papers. Sign this, now. Are you serious? Of course. What, are you going to apologize and make me take care of your mom? Too late for that. Jackson seemed to want to say something but couldn't find the words. He reluctantly signed the papers. After confirming he'd signed, I said, I'll file this today. We're strangers now. Jackson finally panicked. Are you really going to file it? Of course. Please reconsider. Mason won't help and I can't manage everything myself. Mason chimed in. Yeah, Jackson can't do it alone. Please help. It was just as if it had nothing to do with me. Their pleas were too late and too self-serving. I chuckled. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You guys are ridiculous. I told you it's too late. You're not trying to keep me for my sake, but to avoid taking care of your mom. I'm filing for a divorce. I've already packed my stuff and will be out today. Take care of your mom. With that, I left the hospital with the divorce papers. Jackson chased after me, shouting, Wait! But I hopped into a taxi and left. I filed the divorce papers and regained my freedom. I blocked Jackson's calls and reported to my dad, who said, Be careful coming home. Let me know when you arrive at the airport. I'll pick you up. I couldn't hold back my tears at his kindness. When I arrived at the airport, my dad was there to hug me tightly. It had been a long time since I'd seen him. I'm sorry for being a burden even as an adult. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. I'm glad to have you back. He patted my back as we headed home. We had fast food for dinner, but it tasted better than any meal I'd had at in my laws. I fell asleep talking to my dad. When I woke up, I relished my newfound freedom. Now that I'm free, I wanted to have a little fun and live a life, but that's not going to happen. I had to catch up on work, so I focused on that. A month after moving back, Mason visited. I didn't want to talk to him, but my dad insisted. We met at a nearby family restaurant, where Jackson also showed up. He ran up to me. Lily. I wanted to apologize. I should have believed you, not mom. I was puzzled. Pulling away from Jackson's embrace, I learned that his mother-in-law, who was discharged from the hospital a week ago, is unmanageable. She's been lashing out at Jackson because she is frustrated with her physical limitations. Jackson has been taking time off work to care for her, but he can't do it indefinitely. No one else is stepping up to help. Even Mason decided to chip in financially and hire a home health aide. But the aides keep quitting because she's so difficult to deal with. 
Jackson realized that what I had been saying about his mother-in-law was true and he wanted to apologize and have me back. Please, I'll help out this time and I'll be on your side. You must be struggling without money, right? I'm begging you too, Lily. You're the only one we can rely on. If this continues, no one will take care of mom. I'll even give you an allowance. The two of them bowed their heads. I thought it served them right. I'm sorry, but I have no obligation to you or your mother anymore. I'm doing just fine working from home. In fact, I'm more focused on my job and I'm earning more. So I have no intention of getting back together with you. Don't contact me or ambush me again. If you do, I'll sue. With that, I left the table. Whether they were shocked or had given up, Jackson and Mason didn't follow me. Six months have passed. I've been working hard from home. I occasionally hear updates about Jackson from old friends. He started a part-time construction job to pay for his mother's care facility, but ended up injuring his leg. Because of that, he had to take a two-month break and he was fired from both jobs. Mason seems to have cut ties with Jackson entirely. Thanks to my firm stance, I haven't heard from Jackson since. Next time, I'll sue him and thanks to that, I haven't heard from Jackson since then. I'm living a fulfilling life now. Last night, I jokingly told my dad, maybe it's time for me to find a boyfriend. Ah, go ahead and find happiness, he said, but his eyes looked a bit sad. Though I told dad that, I'm really content with our life together. I work hard, and at the end of the day, I enjoy a drink with dad, or go shopping and traveling freely. I want to cherish these days.